Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, this is Tony Day. Today what I'm going to do is show you how you can grade a sequence in Rec. 709 and you can output to HDR10 uh, and have it display properly through YouTube. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve and the clips, two of the clips that I'm going to show you, this one and this one are available for download from uh, Blackmagic Design's website. So these are freely available. You can go fi uh, find them. The links are below on where you can get them, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can download from them to try this out yourself. Please feel free to follow along uh, with the same footage here. And this last one here is just mine. And also I want to point out that if you don't have an HDR monitor, you're not going to really be able to see what you produce. Okay. So it's probably a good idea to have one at least so you can view it. It doesn't have to be calibrated exactly, but it needs to at least be able to show like a uh, recognize and show um, HDR content for this to really be useful for you. When you pull in your footage, it'll probably look something like this. It'll be ungraded um, and all that stuff. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to use a color managed workflow, okay? And using a color managed workflow is very important for this because uh, if you are looking at producing a Rec. 709 and or an sRGB, uh, and then also adding on to that an HDR um, output or an HDR render, then uh, you really need to be working in a color managed workflow. This means that we are not going to be using lookup tables because lookup tables will, uh, it's, a, it's a destructive way of um, creating that final output and it does not allow you to easily go in between uh, different color spaces and gammas, okay? And being able to render in a different color space and gamma is essential to providing HDR content. When you open up your project settings, you go into color management here and you're gonna see uh, DaVinci YRGB, which will be your default. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into ACES CCT, okay? Um, I'm not going to go over all the nuances of ACES. I strongly recommend learning about it so that you can fully understand everything. If you're watching this, I'm assuming that um, you know what ACES kind of is. And uh, if you don't, you really need to go to ACES Central or look this stuff up um, either on YouTube or elsewhere uh, to really you know, dive into this. Once you understand it, it's pretty simplistic. So for input device transform, this is basically asking which camera and uh, color space, gamma, all that stuff are we picking? Since we're gonna be using Blackmagic RAW, we don't need to pick one. We're gonna ignore that and have none. If you're trying to use, um, let's say you have a bunch of Sony footage from uh, say it's S-Log3 and S-Gamut3, you could pick that and it will automatically try to uh, conform those shots uh, properly. Um, otherwise, you'll have to manually select it later. For the ACES output device transform, this is basically what color space are we trying to uh, target, okay? So since uh, most of us are gonna be grading in either Rec. 709 or for sRGB for web, uh, you pick whichever one you tend to use, but I'm gonna pick Rec. 709. And then we will leave these things the same. We are also going to click on enable HDR 10 plus and then we're gonna hit save. So this will transform our footage, okay? So then uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna just grade normally, okay? Since it's Rec. 709, we're just gonna grade for Rec. 709. So I'll just turn on my grades. So this is this uh, boxing one. This is uh, this wedding one. And then this is this flower over here, okay? And again, just grade normally, okay? The HDR stuff will come later. Um, and especially if you don't have a proper HDR monitor to really see what you're doing, it's not going to be possible to really know what you're doing. So um, just, uh, you know, do your do what you normally do. Okay, so once you're done with your grade, what you're going to do is you're going to go into delivery, okay? And uh, the first thing that you should do is render a Rec. 709 version, whatever your normal version is, we'll just, uh, you know, for this one, we'll call it test uh, Rec. 709, okay? And we're just gonna do a single clip and I doubled each thing so that we can kind of have a loop. When you choose your output in here, um, you know, for uh, rec regular Rec. 709 deliverable, which is standard dynamic range, you can pick uh, what, whatever your normal stuff is, okay? 
uh, you know, you can pick a, usually I'll, I'll just make it an H.264 um, and just do your normal renders, okay? So this is just, just do this because you're going to want it to compare, okay? So after you've rendered that, uh, we're going to render an HDR version. We're going to go into our settings and in the ACES output device transform, we're going to choose Rec 2020 ST 2084. Now there's hybrid log gamma. There's like all these other things that you can pick, but this one is what I've been using. And as far as the nits, I haven't seen any difference uh, in how it's interpreted. So we're just going to select this one. Leave this on the default. Uh, everything else you can just leave the way it is and we'll hit save. Now it's going to look weird. Okay. Because this gamma and uh, color space is not um, really, you know, viewable regularly on a standard dynamic range monitor. So if you had an HDR monitor, you should be able to see this and project this properly. Okay. But I can't on this monitor currently because it's in the standard dynamic range mode and it's not the proper monitor for grading this kind of stuff. So when we go down here, we are going to select QuickTime. We're going to select DNxHR, DNxHRHQX 10 bit, and then we're going to select this embed HDR10 metadata. We'll leave the resolution and the frame rate the same. Okay, and then you're going to render this and you will upload that DNxHR 10-bit uh, file to YouTube. Now, I have seen people talk about creating an H.265. Um, I have not had good uh, success with H.265 out of Resolve, um, but if you do that, you're going to, if you wanna try this H.265, make sure that embed HDR10 metadata is in there and then uh, you're going to want to uh, go here to encoding profile and hit main 10. Okay, when you do that, um, it will um, provide what you need. And if you, for safety, ever want to put in the color space tag and gamma tag, you can do that. Just make sure that whatever file you render, you double check it that it is um, rec 2020 and ST2084. Since we used ACES, we did not have to manually tell the uh, file to be the proper color space and gamma. What I'm gonna do though, is show you in VLC uh, what the tags are, okay? So I'm gonna open up the Rec 709 version. We'll pause it. I'll go into tools, and then we can select codec information. This codec information will tell you that this Rec. 709 media that's playing is uh, in Rec. 709. ITU RBT 709, ITU RBT 709 range, okay? Now, so this is normal, right? This is normal for a Rec. 709 uh, render. When I open HDR10 though, it looks weird, okay? See how different this looks, okay? That's because it's not really being displayed properly, okay? Uh, I would have to enable my monitor for HDR in order to see this right. Go into the codec information and look here. We have color primaries, our BT2020. So we're in Rec2020. And the uh, uh, here we have that uh, ST2084PQ, okay? So, and the color space of uh, BT2020. So we have, this is in Rec2020 and ST2084, okay? So that's it. If you've done this correctly, you should see your results uh, play back on YouTube properly. Uh, I have some examples below. Not only do I have an HDR render, but I also have the Rec. 709 render. So you can kind of compare the two um, uploaded uh, for the sequence here in YouTube. And I also have some samples of HDR content that I have uploaded as tests that were graded in Rec. 709 and just done this exact same way so you can see uh, what the results were, okay? I hope this was helpful. Um, again, please, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful for you, um, please like, subscribe, share it. Please consider also becoming a patron and I will catch you next time.